Um, this video is about one of the most important features of Irish genealogy, the fact that so many people can't find their bloody ancestors. So what I'm going to talk about is, is reasons, particular reasons, why you can't find your ancestors. Um, the first reason, the first most important one, is, is Irish surnames. I've said this before in various um, other videos, but it's worth saying over and over again because people, I still find it hard to believe just how slippery Irish surnames are and how hard to, um, to get a grasp on when you're doing research. Um, the point to be kept in mind is that uh, Irish surnames are the product of a collision between two very different languages, simple as that, and two very different cultures. They were recorded, all of them, in all of the records you'll be using in English by English speakers, and the vast majority of them were spoken to those English speakers by Irish speakers, so um, Gaelic speakers. So you can see that the, the, the potential for catastrophic misunderstanding, mistranscription, mistranslation is always there. Okay, one of the features of um, um, Irish surnames as well, or of surnames generally, is that they tend to migrate towards the most familiar. Um, this, what you see in front of you, is the, the results page for the surname Rin, which is, uh, uh, it, there are various versions of it, or I-N-N, or I-N-N-E, or Y-N-N-E, and so on and so forth. Um, but I was doing research on a family um, who, in the US, who said they were Ryan. And when I went into the records, I found they were, in fact, all Rins. And the reason for that is quite simple, that in, in America, when they said they were, their surname was Rin and they were Irish, everybody presumed they just said Ryan, because Ryan is about 400 times more common than Rin. Ryan, you can see Ryan infesting the whole, uh, the whole of mid-Munster there, um, Tipperary. You can't throw a stone in Tipperary without hitting Ryan. So the, they, they hear Rin, they and they presume it's Ryan, okay? And that happens in, in all sorts of different ways. Um, it happens uh, with uh, anything that's faintly unusual. You might think your, your ancestors have an unusual surname and you're lucky. Um, you're lucky if, they were, if it was written down accurately. In most cases, there would be some distortion happening. In lots of cases, people wrote down what they thought they heard. And what they think they hear is what they're familiar with. And what they're familiar with is not necessarily what your ancestor's surname was. So that's one aspect of um, the, the surname problem. Um, so for example, another, another uh, example that I've come across is um, family of Barnes in the US researching their ancestors in Ireland. And it turns out they weren't Barnes. They were Barons. Okay, Baron is a, quite a common surname. You can see there in Wexford, um, Waterford, that sort of area. And uh, you can see an English speaker, somebody says their name is Baron. Barons, of course you're Barons. And that's it immediately. So the, the familiar um, overtakes the unfamiliar. And that happens regularly again and again. Things that are more, more specifically to do with, with the collision between Gaelic and English are the prefixes to Gaelic surnames. So the, the classic ones are Mac, meaning son of, and O, meaning grandson of. And English-speaking record keepers, until well towards the end of the, the 19th century, and even well after that, they treated them as completely optional. You know, would you like an O with that, sir, or a Mac? Uh, so... For example, um, if you go come to Ireland now, um, Shea, the surname Shea, is pretty much uh, extinct. Everybody is now O'Shea. But look at the 19th century. And there were nearly 3,000 households of Shays. There were only 89 O'Shays, and none of them in Kerry, which is where they're, they're most common. So... Again, people went to the US, Shea Stadium in New York is named after an Irish immigrant. Um, 
all of his second and third cousins and um, the descendants in Ireland, uh, his, his uh, extended family in Ireland are now called O'Shea, almost certainly. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, there are some surnames never lost the Max. For some reason, McDermott stayed as it was. Dermot was pretty much um, un, unheard of. Other surnames um, lost the Max and never got them back. So McKiernan became Kiernan. Kiernan is much more common now than than, uh, than McKiernan. Okay, so you can see here McKiernan, McKiernan. There are quite a fair, quite a number of them. McKiernan, McKiernan. Um, and there they are in um, in Leitrim and Cavan in the 19th century. So McKiernan's continued losing the Mac. Um, O'Brien is a classic one as well. Nearly half of the families in the mid 19th century are just Brian. So you might be called O'Brien if you're living in, in modern Ireland. You're almost certainly O'Brien, but your ancestors are in the records as Brian. So that's one of the reasons you, you won't find the, your ancestors. Um, one of the, the um, gill and kill is another um, prefix that was often treated as, as um, optional. So um, um, gill martin can very often become martin. Okay, gill is, means devotee of or follower of. So Magilla um, Martin, which would be the, the Gaelic for gill martin, um, is son of the devotee of Saint Martin, and they and they became Martins. Okay, so you you need to keep your eye on any of these prefixes and treat them as completely um, optional. Visible sometimes, more visible in the twentieth century than in the nineteenth century, but not to be trusted. One of the things that I do with surnames is use a wild card. Um, this is a pretty rough and ready way of um, of treating some of the distortions with surnames. They, if the distortion is uh, phonetic, if it's a question of pronunciation, then this can very often um, uh, bring it up. So, for example, B, a wild card, will pick any any um, series of characters, then an R, then any series of characters, and then ending in an N. So. Um, the vowels are where the uh, where the um, the accents live, and it can also throw up. So, for example, uh, Barden, 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 and you get lots and lots of variant spellings. Once you do that, you be it, it gives you a sense of just how um, unstable the um, the surname environment in in Ireland is. Um, another reason. Why you you can have trouble finding your your ancestors is the way that place names and boundaries interact in Ireland. First of all, um, the place names, particularly in church records and in the state records of births, marriages, and deaths, in in the actual records themselves, there's no standardisation of place names. So um, um, let's just pick uh, the the townland where my ancestors came from, a place called Capiouche. Now, how do you spell that? Is it one P or two? Is it a K? Is it a C? Um, it's probably a C, so C. There's a P in there. Capiouche, E, we will leave that out. Oosh, okay. Okay, it's in County Roscommon. And let's see what it comes up. And there it is there, Capiouche. If you look at it phonetically, so again, the wild cards are very useful for weeding out um, accent distortion. Okay, but that's only part of the, the the problem with place names. One of the most important problems is the way boundaries, county boundaries, and particularly um, the state registration boundaries interact with each other. The state registration boundaries. These are the boundaries you'll see in the indexes that you search on Ancestry.com or Find My Past or IrishGenealogy.ie, not on Roots Ireland, but um, that's another another story. So these are the, 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 the divisions that births are recorded in. So if you're looking for uh, a birth in Roscommon, you have Castlery, Roscommon, Strokestown, Boyle. Okay. Carrick and Shannon is in Leitrim. 
Um, Glenamadi is in Galway. Mount Bellew, um, Balnaslow, Athlone. Athlone is 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 in Roscommon as well. Um, so you Balnaslow is in Galway. Okay, so you you'll confine your search to these places in Roscommon, will you? You fool! No, you shouldn't do that. Um, the the problem about these divisions is that they were based on the old poor law unions, and the poor law unions were set up um, to provide the money, the taxation money for a local workhouse. So there was a workhouse in Castlebury, there was a workhouse in Roscommon, a workhouse in Athlone, and the area um, that it took in people from was also the area that produced the tax to fund it. It was all a very um, um, rational um, uh, Victorian setup. The problem is that to create the tax base, they had to ignore county boundaries, they had to ignore parish boundaries. So for example, with Balnaslow here in County Galway, if you click on it, you'll get a list of all the place names in Balnaslow Poor Law Union, which is also Balnaslow Superintendent Registrar's District, which is the one you'll see in the indexes. Okay, um, there are two things about a list like this. First of all, um, it, these are the standard spellings and the standard spellings are very often mangled and um, distorted in the, the state records of births, marriages and deaths. And that, those place names can be extremely important. They can lead you to property records, to baptismal records, to um, lots and lots of estate records and so on. So it, the, this place name is extremely important. So identifying the right one is very important. Um, what you can do on the site here is, you can see, first of all, um, it's the county is Galway until it's not Galway. Okay, so my ancestors came from this parish, Moor, which is in County Roscommon, but all births, deaths and marriages from that townland are registered in Balnaslow Poor Law Union. Okay, what registrar's district is it in? This is the sub-district, and this, if, this, you'll see this on the birth or marriage or death record, so this is the, the clue, if you're trying to identify it, it's in the... Registrar's District of Cray, you click on that and you get a much smaller list of all the place names in the Registrar's District of Cray. So on the the um, on the, the birth or death or marriage registration, you'll see the Registrar's District. And if it's in the Registrar's District, it must be one of these place names here because these were the place names that the Registrar was authorised to deal with. Um, and you can see um, one of the, the, the places he was authorised to deal with was America. Now that's that's a, 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 I think it's a place name that came into being around the time of the American Revolution. I think there there were um, there were lots of li libertarian minded um, people in the parish of Moore, uh, and I'm sure there still are. But anyway, once you're looking at a list like this, you you have a restricted target area. That's the whole point of it. Okay, so that's that's a, um, one example. The other example is the Catholic parish maps, uh, the Catholic parishes. Um, these maps look nice and stable. Oh, look, there's the border between the, the parish of Balnagar and Elfin. Good God, no. This is a snaps, snapshot of a, a, a moving train. This is a, a the Catholic, Catholic parish has expanded, amalgamated, split over the course of the 19th century. And um, this is a snapshot based on the 1837 listings in, in Lewis's topographical dictionaries. So it's it's only intended as a, as a guide to the relative positions, really. So if you take, um, if you pick a parish there, Kilkeven, which includes Castle Ree, um, you get a list of all the, the, um, the, uh, play, the records as they exist. And okay, in this case, the Catholic parish corresponds to the, the civil parish, so which is kind of unusual and not a great example because of that. So um, let me see at Lone, St. Peter's. Okay, the place names in, in the Catholic parish. So there's, there's two civil parishes um, that are partly included in at Lone Catholic parish. So Drum and St. Peter's. So if you're looking at land records or census records, um, you have to go to it could be in either of these. And that's, again, that, that ambiguity is one of the, the, the problems of dealing with place names. 
Um, the other, the last of the major problems um, in dealing with, with uh, uh, in not finding your ancestors is trust in transcripts too much. Okay, so let me give you a, an example. Um, let's pick uh, the civil parishes of County Galway. Um, let's see uh, Killaroran a very different place from Kilareeran, and Baligar, the town of Baligar in 1911. Um, if you click on the 1911, you get taken to the area on, this is on the National Archives of Ireland census website for Baligar town. If you look at this, this, if you know Baligar, this is a suspiciously small number of people, small number of households. Um, there were far more than this. There were about 300 um, houses in Baligar in 1911. They haven't been transcribed. So if you're searching for them on the National Archives website, you won't find them. Okay. What seems to have happened is that uh, the, the transcribers were using uh, a finding aid that didn't make allowances for places that weren't quite towns and weren't only townlands. So street villages, as you might call them, are, are yeah, villages of a single street with maybe a hundred houses, 50 down either side of it. Um, and they, they were left out. Um, how do you get around it? Well, um, there's, a, let me just go back. Um, mm -hmm. Go back. Okay. Um, you can go on the site. There is a, a list here. What's missing from the 1911 census? Okay, this is a, a, a project I did um, years ago. This, this much bleary eyed, I'm scrolling through the online things. Um, you can see the all. This is a perfect illustration of something I say regularly that everything. Um, that's been dealt with by a human being has mistakes in it. And every human intervention adds another layer of mistakes. So first of all, there are mistakes in the original census. Um, people, for example, very often um, recorded their grandchildren as nieces and nephews for some reason. So there, there are mistakes in the people filling out the forms. There are mistakes in the people collecting the forms. When it came to, uh, to microfilming them, the, the online, um, 1901, 1911 are based on um, Mormon microfilms. When it came to microfilming them, um, the Mormons missed some things. So, for example, here in Antrim, Duncairn, returns exist, not microfilmed. So, again, another layer of mistakes. When it came to transcribing the microfilms, um, there were, again, there were mistakes made. Mistakes, well, obvious mistakes in terms of the, um, uh, the, the actual transcriptions, but systematic omissions, because, for example, let me go down here to Galway and show you Kilaroran Baligar town online not transcribed. If it's online, you can scroll through it manually. You can treat the online um, uh, version of it as if you were looking at a microfilm and scroll through it um, page by page, um, and you can see Portumna town, Kinvara town, Hedford town. Um, it's these small towns that, that tended to fall through the cracks. Okay. Um, the, uh, my favorite, okay, that, that's an, there are direct links there to the, um, to the, the, the places where the, the missing ones start online, the missing images start online. Um, what I'm going to do is just show you one of the, my favorite, um, oops, that's the wrong one. Um, so we want to go to the, the census website. So Balan Voher. Okay, we want to search the census. Um, and this is something. All right. I want somebody who devoted their life to garlic. There they are. Patrick O'Rowan. Show all information. He's a garlic league or organizer. Absolutely, add more garlic to everything. It improves life beyond compare. If you look at the original, and uh, there's, you can see how somebody transcribing this in Canada um, without any knowledge of Irish 
history might have said garlic league organizer okay there's you know ireland around the, the beginning of the 20th century was a very strange place maybe that there, there were um people going around the place with with um strings of onions and berets and striped t-shirts saying zoot part of the garlic league but no this is the gaelic league okay this is what part of the, the revivalist movement for um the irish language okay that's one example there are tens of thousands of tra plain transcription mistakes like that and that's a, a very good reason why you can't find your ancestors um the most common reason why you're not finding what you're expecting to find i in my case why i don't find what i'm expecting to find is that i've made a mistake myself so always consider that one of the things that is irrit minor irritation with some of the most important um, Irish research sites is that they don't have a standard order for surname and place name. In some places it's surname first and then forename, sorry, surname and forename. In other cases it's forename and then surname. And I keep getting it wrong. I keep looking for Murphy John when I'm looking for John Murphy. So that's one thing to consider. <clears throat> of course, then there's the, the other thing, which is Grenham's first law of Irish genealogy which is that there is somebody out there, some little gremlin going around all the records, cutting out the page with your ancestor on it just before you get a chance to look at it. So, okay, with that in mind, I wish you the very best of luck and avoid the gremlins. <laughs>